Hey, welcome to my channel. I am a soon-to-be first-year medical student starting in July. My school will be online thanks to the current global situation. In this video, I'm going to share with you my MCAT story, how I took the MCAT three times, how I eventually improved, and how that helped me get into med school for the second time. So let's get started. Hey everyone, so before I get started, one thing I want to say is definitely you should aim to take the MCAT only one time and do get on it the first time, but that's not always the case. Sometimes we need one try, two tries, three tries to finally t get to where we want to, and that is totally okay. So that's why I want to share my story with you. I want to be completely transparent to show you that, yes, sometimes you do have to take the MCAT three times or four times and you can still get into medical school. Now, I remember taking the MCAT a first time and then having to take it a second time and then a third time. And every time I felt more and more discouraged just because I thought, you know, oh, this is so shameful. Like, I can't share this with my friends. They'll think I'm stupid. This is, you know, I'm pathetic. But since then, since I've taken the MCAT and gotten into med school, my perspective has changed so much. Now, to start off, I had always done well in classes in school, like from elementary school all the way through college. I had a pretty decent GPA. But the one thing that I was always scared of and the one thing I always underperformed on were standardized tests. So in elementary school, we had like standardized tests for my um, for my state. And then for high school, I had the ACT, which I ended up taking like five times. And I felt so discouraged after that. And just in general, I was super afraid of standardized tests. And I felt like everything was out of my control, like just whatever I did, I couldn't perform well. And so I started off the MCAT with the same approach and mindset. But eventually that changed, especially after my third MCAT. So here's my story. Basically, the first MCAT that I took was at the end of my junior year as I was starting my first application cycle for med school. So I took it on June 2nd, 2016. That's that's a while ago. And my goal at that time was a 510 or higher just based on kind of what the schools that I wanted to apply to. Now, I had started studying during winter break of junior year. So somewhere around January, I started studying and then my exam was in June. Now, keep in mind that during this time while I was studying, I also had my full-time classes. So in undergrad, I was a biomedical engineering major. So during this time, I had a class of biomechanics, biomedical instrumentation, organic chemistry lecture, plus a lab, general biochemistry, and biomedical engineering lab. So I had this full load of courses. And then on top of that, I was also working some part-time jobs during this time. And somehow I thought that I would have the time to study for the MCAT. So I know that I remember we created some type of study group with a few friends. We would meet here and there from time to time to review some concepts. I think I did a few AAMC practice tests, maybe one, maybe two, but I never did a full day simulation. I didn't have a strict study schedule. I basically was not dedicated at all. I was just messing around, even though at that time I thought I was studying. So I had no idea how to approach the MCAT. So then I ended up taking the MCAT on June 2nd, but I had already submitted my first AMCAS application. So basically after taking the MCAT a month later, um, my AMCAS application would have received that MCAT score and then schools could start reviewing my application once it was complete. Now I got my first MCAT score and here you can see my overall results. Oh, here, let's make myself a little bit smaller here. You can see my overall results. Now, one thing that I anticipated is I knew that I was pretty good in physics in general. That was a subject that I liked and I really liked psychology and sociology and bio or biology I was pretty decent at. So I expected to do decently on those things, but that does not reflect in my score at all. So for Kempfiz, I ended up getting uh, 127. So you can see the percentiles, but basically my overall score was a 506, which is in the 67th percentile at that time. And critical analysis and reasoning skills, I was actually surprised that I performed at an 82% because I, Honestly, to be completely honest, I'm terrible at reading. So my score, I don't know, it didn't really reflect what I anticipated. And a 506 was definitely not close enough to the 510 gold that I had. So at this point, I kind of panicked and I thought, okay, well, I know that I can do better. I am confident that I have higher potential than this. So I wanted to retake it again. And I made a huge mistake here. So 
I wanted this MCAT score, the second round of MCAT score, to be included in my application cycle. So I rushed and I signed up for August 20th as my next testing date. So remember, June 2nd, the next test is August 20th. So this is a huge mistake. Again, I should have left way more time in here and I shouldn't have rushed because August 20th, I take the exam and then the scores come out in September. So at that point, I don't even know if medical schools would consider the second score, right? Even if I perform better, I'm not sure if they would even see it because they would be receiving it so late in the cycle. Now, again, my goal here was a 510 or higher, but another huge mistake I made here is that for that summer from between junior and senior year, I had planned to do a pre-medical fellowship abroad with the Atlantis program. And I'll go into another video explaining this in detail in my experience. But basically, I was for the entire month of July, I was abroad in Athens, Greece, shadowing in hospitals for about 20 hours a week. And then during the rest of the time, I was engaging in cultural activities and interacting with other students there. And I basically did some studying, right? So during the day I would shadow and then I would go home. And while other students would want to go out and enjoy Greece and, and engage with people, I actually shut myself in the hotel room and I would study. So I did an injustice to both of these experiences, honestly, because I didn't get to fully experience this time in Greece because I was so focused on studying, but I also didn't have a full-time study schedule because I was in Greece and focused on shadowing. So if I could go back in time and redo this, I would have fully focused on my pre-medical fellowship and not taken time to study for the MCAT and not have signed up for a second MCAT so quickly after the first one. But during this time, I did do a little more AMC practice tests and I would go over and review them. But again, it, I had no dedicated study period. I was anticipating or thinking that just because I'm doing more practice tests, I would supposedly do better. But um, you'll find out that that was not the case. So I ended up taking the MCAT a second time in August and I ended up performing worse. So this was where I hit an all time low and I decided I was giving up. Like I, no matter what I did, I felt like I could not improve. You can see I went down by one point. So I went down to a 505 and here my psych social <clears throat> foundations of behavior went up, but then everything else kind of went down from my previous exam. So I gave up and I was like, no, I'm not taking this MCAT anymore. Whatever happens, happens. I was super frustrated, super discouraged. And I mean, at that point, I still was doing my interviews and I ended up getting an acceptance into medical school. But then even though I got an acceptance, I decided to withdraw that acceptance and ended up doing a Fulbright scholarship abroad. And if you want to hear the full story, I will link it in the description below. So we don't focus on that here. But basically, at the end of my senior year, I withdrew my medical school application or my acceptance. And I had decided that I would go abroad to do a Fulbright scholarship for nine months. And so I had all of summer at the end of my senior year that was completely empty. And I remember one night, it was like a Sunday evening and I was talking to my mom and reflecting on how I probably plan to reapply to medical school in the future and how my MCAT was the only thing that was basically holding me back. And so I had never really considered an online course before or a prep course for the MCAT before because I didn't want to pay that much money. I basically didn't have that much money to give to a course. But in this case, my mom kind of nudged me and encouraged me to sign up for a course. And she said that she would help to cover some of the costs. So I literally Sunday night, we were talking about this. I signed up for an MCAT Princeton Review online course. And the next day, the course started. So it was a 12-week course. Basically, I spent the entire summer just dedicating to this course. I didn't go out with friends. I wasn't doing any jobs, performing any work. I was literally 100% dedicated to this course because my test date was September 2nd. So I had basically all of summer to focus on studying for the MCAT. And I upped my goal to a 515 just because I felt, you know, I am now tr starting to understand what studying actually means and having a dedicated study period. Now, do I think that you need to sign up for an MCAT prep course? Absolutely not. There are so many free resources online, so many people sharing their study schedules, and it is definitely doable without putting in so much money into a prep course. The prep course did help me significantly though, and I finally felt for the first time like I understood what 
dedicated study meant and how to do it and how to discipline myself to continue doing it in the future. So um, keeping that in mind, I ended up taking the third MCAT on September 2nd. And literally a week later, I packed my bags and went abroad for my Fulbright scholarship. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that during the last week or the last two weeks of my MCAT course, I actually ended up having a pretty invasive surgery. So for about one or two weeks, I was on pain meds and super drowsy and on antibiotics. And I still somehow managed to continue with my study period, attend all of the classes. So it's definitely manageable. And so here's how I performed on my third MCAT. You can see here that my score improved significantly. I would say it went up from a 506 to a 505 and then up to a 513. So now it was around the 87th or 88th percentile. Literally all of my categories went up except for the critical analysis and reasoning skills that still remain pretty low. Um, but you can see that my psych social foundations of behavior improved significantly. So did chemistry and physics and even biology. So I was super satisfied with this score, even though it didn't meet my 515 goal. It was a significant improvement of seven points. And I felt confident that when I was reapplying in the future, even if, if admissions committees during my interviews would ask me what happened with the MCAT, I had a solid reason to explain, you know, what I did wrong before, what I realized and how I improved. So here you can see the comparison again of my three scores from a 506 to then doing worse to a 505 and then finally back up to a 513. And I definitely did get asked about my MCAT score in the interview. So make sure that if you are in this situation as well, you just have a good explanation for what happened and what you learned from this experience. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with is that this experience with the MCAT and standardized tests has been a huge roller coaster for me. It always has been. And I know that for some people, it comes super easy, right? They study for a few weeks, then they take the MCAT, and then they just knock it right out of the park and get a super amazing score. That's not the case for everyone. It is totally okay. You can still get into medical school. And in retrospect, what I realize is that what I lacked for my first and second MCAT wasn't intelligence, but it was discipline. I simply didn't know how to create a study schedule. I didn't know how I should frame my day from morning to evening. I didn't know what resources I should use. And having a prep course simply helped me to achieve that discipline. And in the future, now I feel significantly more confident to do this by myself when it comes to step one, step two, or any exam that I have to take in medical school. So this is what I learned. If we did everything perfectly the first time around, we'd never learn any lessons. We wouldn't learn how to improve if everything was perfect from the beginning. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a comment. I have more videos coming up sharing my study schedule as well as some more tips for the MCAT. If you're interested, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. And I have also decided to start a blog sharing some more of my advice, more of my story. If you're interested, it's all down in the description below. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.